Hello everyone and welcome back to the WSO2 API Manager series. This video will focus on different grant types supported by WSO2 API Manager and we'll do a hands-on lab with a few of one. So here is the quick agenda for today's session. We'll see the grant type, who are the primary actors involved, different grant types supported by WSO2 API Manager and finally the demo for the few grant types. So what is a grant type? So grant type is typically it's a concept related to OAuth 2.0 which is an open authorization standard. It is also known as OAuth 2.0 grant types or OAuth 2.0 flows. Typically it's a mechanism with the help of that a client application can obtain an access token to access the protected resources on behalf of a user. So it builds a trust relationship between an authorization server and the resource owner. So let's see who are the primary actors involved. So we have a client which is a client application. It could be a web or the mobile application. Resource owner is an actor who actually owns the resources or have permission to access those resources. An authorization server who is typically an identity provider where the user identities are stored and the resource server who actually hosts your backend services. Now we'll see different grant types in WS2 API Manager 4. We'll see a very quick overview of all the grant types supported with a sample use case. So the password grant type is the, is the grant type with the help of that uh, wherever a user is involved to perform a, an action. For example, a user a specific token needs to be generated then we should use a password grant type. Next, we have a client credentials grant type. So whenever we have a system to system communication or machine to machine communication, we should use client credentials grant. Authorization code grant. So authorization code grant is typically used in a scenario whenever we have two applications are interacting with each other with the help of a web UI and is a web redirection involved. Refresh token, it's a not a specific grant type, but this grant type helps to refresh the token generated in the previous steps. Next, we have a JWT grant. So whenever we have a scenario when we need to pass the end user attributes or the claim values to be transferred between the two parties. Next, SAML extension grant. So whenever we have a scenario when a client uh, who used the SAML SSO infrastructure to simultaneously consume the APIs, we should use the SAML grant type. Next, Kerberos OAuth 2 grant. So whenever we have a Kerberos based infrastructure to use the Kerberos tickets, so we should use this type of grant type which allows client to obtain an access token by representing a valid Kerberos ticket to the authorization server. And finally, we have an NTLM grant type. So this is a traditional grant type which is based upon the Windows based authentication. So let's see what all topics we will be covering in the demo. So we will be covering the client credentials grant, the password grant and the refresh token grant. So let's begin the demo. We are starting the demo of grant types. So let's open our publisher portal first. So our publisher portal is accessible we have logged in with the admin default admin credentials and we have these set of apis so we'll take this a test api 02 for demonstration purpose for this particular uh, session uh, as we can see this api has been deployed and let's open the developer portal So as you can see, if we go to the simple tryout section and uh, let's say it's uh, it has been subscribed to this application and we'll generate a test key. And if we hit this API, it gives the response. Now let's introspect this, uh, the test key. So we have to work with this, the token part actually. So if we open this, uh, if we intercept this particular JWT so I'll be using my JWT debugger we'll paste this so as you can see uh, this has been generated using this particular user we see the subject 
the application the issued time and the token issuer details okay now what we have to do we'll just intercept this curl request and we go to sublime text we'll create a new file we'll paste it here and we make this empty over here okay so we'll first use the client credentials grant to generate the access token okay so how do we do that so if we go to the application so since this has been subscribed to this rl test app so we'll go to the applications we'll go to this application we'll go to the production keys we have already we'll just take the curl to generate the access token so we have two use cases so we'll give go with this approach which is a client credentials so we'll just paste it here okay so what does it contain it contains our the host name which is a uh, uh, followed by the token endpoint which is our key manager token endpoint it gets the grant type of the client credentials and in the header we supply this uh, authorization basic which is nothing but a base 64 of the client area in the secret let's verify this so if we open this jw simple base 64 encode decode so what we have to do we have to basically decode uh, uh, uh. okay so let's copy these values okay let's go this way so we'll copy the client id for the consumer key and we'll go it here colon and we'll put it here we'll encode this and if we copy this and if we go to the notepad then this values are identical that means this is the value this is how it works actually for the generation of the the token for this particular use case okay so we'll just copy this we go to the terminal we open a new tab with the profile basic okay so let's paste this curl request so since this is http space url so we'll put minus k okay, it's already there so we have obtained the access token so we'll copy this token we go back to the request we paste it here we copy this complete request and hit the request again we minus k cool so this has worked now let's intercept this jwt what does it contain actually so we go back to this jwt debugger okay so now it see it shows the subject who is the uh, issuer of or the owner of this application actually the uh, the client id and the issue time and expiry time okay including the jti okay so now let's move for the next current type which is a password current type okay so let's go back to our application and we have the curl to generate access token we'll copy this the second one this time which is for the admin so username we need to give the username and the password so for ours which is the default admin admin and this request main same we have to delete this token and we make a curl request using this snippet okay so okay my bad so i have actually changed this password of this admin user so now i have to use the updated password for the admin credentials okay now i had the request cool 
so we have obtained the access token along with the other parameters like a scope token type and expiry duration so we'll paste it here and there we go we just copy this request and paste it here with minus k cool so that means this has worked another important thing is that whenever we generate a new token the previous token gets expired automatically so if we go back to generate the token again using the password grant type so new token has been issued but if we copy and paste this request so so it says that invalid credentials so kindly note that whenever you issue or whenever you hit the token api to obtain a new access token the previous token gets expired okay so next we have the refresh token grant so this is not as a new grant type basically or a new way of creating the generating the token this is basically used to explicitly refresh your token uh, a sample use case could be let's say you have given uh, a password grant type based uh, uh, like the authentication to your uh, for the token generation to your uh, the client application where the user credentials are required to generate the access token and uh, the validity is of let's say for 15 minutes and after 15 minutes you would like to refresh the token so typically it involves after 15 minutes token will get expired so let's say programmatically you handle the scenario in this way that after 13 minutes you programmatically check the validity of the remaining time of the token and you trigger the refresh token api to get a new token the response of the refresh token remains same as an access token however the parameters required for the refresh token is slightly different so let's see what are the refresh token parameters so let me just write the refresh token grant so we this would be refresh token uh, we must apply this uh, authorization and we have to supply the refresh token value so refresh token basically is obtained whenever you obtain the token via the password current type so let's first generate the token try to observe if we have the refresh token value okay so unfortunately we don't have this un a refresh token value okay then what should we do now so the problem is that we have not enabled the refresh token grant for this particular application so we'll go back we have to enable this refresh token we have to update the configuration okay now let's give a try again with the same credentials cool so now this time we have a refresh token value as opposed to the previous step so we'll have to copy this refresh token value and we have to get this here okay so our request is ready so we have to give the url grant type as a refresh token and refresh token value followed by the authorization header which is of basic of the client id and the client secret okay so now let's first hit the request using this access token having one hour validity okay. let's copy the request paste it here and there we go so the request hit successfully so repeat the calls again succeeded okay cool we'll open another tab so this time we'll use a refresh token 
and we also use this pull request here so we remove this bearer token value okay so let's copy this pull request to generate token using refresh token grant hit the request so this time you see a uh, access token has been generated with a new refresh token so we'll copy this request like sorry i copied this uh, token value and let's hit the request with this refresh token cool so this has worked now let's go back and introspect if the if the previous one is still working no so once we have done the token refresh the previous token has been invalidated so whenever we generate a new token whether it's uh, making the api call to the access token or using the refresh token every request invalidates the previous token value and issues a new token okay so that's all for this demo so we have covered client credentials grant password grant and the refresh token grant we have covered all the demo so thank you very much for joining uh, this session and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to get the notifications of my upcoming videos